something that nobody else can do for you. You can't just imitate it and make it up. One thing that Joe just noted to me that's important is eye contact, in a very real sense, is, is a direct reflection of your confidence in the product. So if, if you're struggling to keep eye contact with somebody, it might be because you have a, a real or perceived lack of information, knowledge about the pest service, uh, or about some aspect of the contract, something like that. So a way that you can help yourself have better eye contact is to learn more about the product. If you know the product very, very well, and you know the sale very, very well, then you have no reason to not have 100% confidence and keep your eyes locked onto that person. So enhance your eye contact, practice that. When you go to the grocery store, um, there's a lot of nerdy little pest control things that you can practice all throughout the day. When you talk to the, you know, the, the lady at Taco Bell to get your food, um, go ahead and keep, try focus on keeping eye contact with her. And focus on like trying to mirror her in some way. Is if you do that, it sounds really goofy, but like she's not gonna remember you. He's like, hey, he's the guy who wouldn't look away. Uh, <laughs> or if she does, she's probably gonna be like, hey, he's kind of attractive. So no. Um, so, so go practice that. When you talk to the guy checking you out at the grocery store, the person mm. that at the cash register, go ahead and practice your eye contact and practice mirroring them, getting on the same level, and then just having a conversation. That's something that'll be invaluable as well. You need to be able to have a conversation with somebody and be a little bit witty, but, but focus on the eye contact. And you actually don't have to be really witty. That's a lie. But, you know. Okay, next section. Metaverbal communication. So the aspects of metaverbal communication are volume, pitch, speed, um, silence, and echoing. So we'll start with volume, because volume is one. Volume and speed are probably the two that are most commonly Commonly struggled. Oh, okay, well, let's rephrase that sentence. They're the ones that first year reps struggle with the most. That's part of the easiest way of saying that. So, first, volume. Um, what a lot of us will have a tendency to do is to be very, very loud at the get go. So, somebody opens the door, you're like, oh, hey, just real quick, uh, just the Terminex guy out here taking care of some of the bugs. And people are just like, why are you screaming at me? And what that subconsciously tells the person is that you're not really confident in your product, so you're trying to compensate by screaming at them. So instead of yelling at the person, something that you can actually do is speak a little bit more softly than normal. Like, hey, just real quick, I just I am not here with the terminus, just taking care of a few of the neighbors. Because what that does is the person's like, what's he saying? And it forces them to pay a little bit better attention than they were previously. Comment? Uh, I hear it's good to wait when the person opens the door to wait for them to speak first. Mm -hmm. Um, because then you can see like how loud they're speaking, like if they have like a baby in the back or like what not, then you can decide what your volume is going to be then. Yep. That's perfect. And that's why I turn my back and I step away from the person so that they have to approach me. So they, you know, in, in New Jersey, in the areas where we're going to the East Coast, people are blunt. They'll get used to it really quick and they'll appreciate it because you can close them and get through the process really quickly. Unlike in Utah where they just drag it out because they don't want to say no. But out there, like, people are blunt. So they'll come to the door and be like, hey, what do you want? Or can I help you? And people are very, like, just very to the point. So you can turn around and be like, hey, yeah, just real quick. And so if the person's like, if the person's like, hey, can I help you? Like, yeah, hey, just real quick. And like you adjust your volume and your energy, your tone based on what the customer does. So that's a very good point. That's, a, that's an advantage of making the customer talk to you first. So the, the volume, try to speak a little bit more softly. Also, like, depending on who you're talking with, but like different age groups have different volumes. So younger people, normally louder, older people, I tend to talk a little bit quieter with because you don't want to come off as like somebody over there and you want to be the grandson. You know what I mean? You like, hey, grandma, just have your son some pest control. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, grandma. But that's, uh, that's your thing. That's your choice. Another goofy little clip that we'll, everyone's probably seen like 4,000 times. Um, but I'm a big fan of this thing. So just volume control is important. I struggle with this because my family are very loud people, and I learned that if I wasn't loud in my house, I didn't get fed. So a lot of us is, come from big families. We probably struggle with being a little bit loud. Um, so we've got to work on controlling our volume, bringing the volume down a little bit. You can still be confident. You can still be really energetic, but you need to keep the tone down so that people will pay attention to what you're saying instead of being turned off. It's like the TV. I don't know if you guys notice this, but when you're watching your television show, it goes to commercials. The commercials are like 10 points louder on your volume button. You don't want to be in a commercial because people will just tune you out. So you want to be part of like the show. Does that make sense? And now be quick. Big show. Yeah. So uh, wow, someone forward. Mm -hmm. So next we have pitch. 
Um, we'll just take one second on this one. Your pitch is important. How many people here served in, in like Latin America? So their missions, Portugal, Spain. Okay, so when you come back from your missions, you have a tendency to talk like this and to end every note on a high note because in Guatemala or wherever you sorry, that's me. In Latin America where you served, that was the best way to speak because people understood you better. But in the United States, that means I'm not really sure about what I'm talking about. And so I'm actually <laughs> asking you a question. And so you don't want to do that because that's not, that doesn't illustrate confidence. Does that make sense? Because everything you're saying, like, we're going to be in the area, we're going to be taking care of the bugs for a couple of your neighbors. And, and you go like, you are? Or you get what I'm saying? And even if they don't question you, like, verbally, like, it's a subconscious thing. So try to end not seeing your words like that. Your pitch should usually end on a down note. Like, hey, just real quick, we're in the neighborhood taking care of Tom up the road. I don't know if you know him. But we're just going to be doing a few of the houses on that road next to him. We're just seeing a few of the little ants, a couple of little mosquitoes, or a couple of little wasps, that kind of thing. So when you do that, like it illustrates more confidence. And so try to like either keep it flat or go down. It doesn't mean you can't be excited. It just means make sure to not end on the high note because that's not going to help you. Um, next one is speed. And the first point is just slow down. Even if you think you already speak slowly, you don't. This is my number one struggle personally. Joe's told me this a hundred times and I still struggle with it. Especially here in front of you guys, I have a tendency to speak very quickly. On the doors, you will as well. So really slow down, focus on doing your pitch in front of the mirror, doing it slow, and then taking it like two notches down and doing it even slower. So my analogy with this one, um, well first, the reason that we tend to talk fast is because we feel like, oh my gosh, like. I'm at tryouts here, and he's gonna give me 30 seconds to get out of everything I can. So, hey, just real quick, my time, my time, next one's here, taking care of the couple bucks for coming, the neighbors seeing this. Like, you wanna spew information at them because you feel like like they're only gonna keep the door open for 30 seconds, and that's not the case. Instead, learn to say something very slowly, but say it in the most powerful way possible. So, speak, like, focus on making sure your body language and your metaverbals are, are such that you can say something very slowly and something that's not very in depth, but still get the customer's attention. And that will help you guys, that'll help a lot. So my analogy is, uh, so I listen to audiobooks from Audible. I don't know if anyone else is Audible, it's really nifty, but it's an app, Amazon, good stuff. So you can listen to it on like one time speed, 1.5, 2, 2.5 or 3, and I like to listen to it on like 2.5 or 3. And so when you listen to 2.5 or 3, you're talking about this fast, you're talking about all these things. And so you're like, but eventually like you get kind of used to it, and so like you don't realize how fast it's going, and other people listen to it, like, holy crap, you're flying. And that's kind of how the customers are. You don't understand because you just get used to saying the same thing over and over again. But you don't understand that you can literally fly through this and say it very, very quickly. When in reality, to the customer, they're hearing it like an audio book on the first time at three times speed where they just can't fathom what you're saying because you're just spewing it. And when you do turn it down to one time speed again, the audio book, it sounds so slow. But in reality, for your customer that's hearing your pitch for the very first time, that's not slow. That's normal. So even if you feel like you're speaking like somebody with a mental disability, you're not. Your customer understands you better when you speak slowly. And I'm trying to demonstrate this, but I'm not very good at speaking slowly. Um, I don't remember what YouTube video it was here, but it probably wasn't. Huh? You guys want to watch it? Let's see what we got. Okay, Eunice Travel Plans, I need to be in New York on Monday, LA on Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA on Thursday, New York on Friday, got it? Got it. Got it. So you want to work here, what really makes you think you deserve a job here? Well, sir, I think on my feet I'm good to figures and have a sharp mind. Excellent, can you start on Monday? Yes, sir, absolutely, without hesitation. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim, Bill, Bob, call Fred, Low, Dork, Ava, and Ted. Business is business, and as we all know, in order to get something done, you got to do something. In order to do something, we got to get to work, so let's get to work. Thank you for taking the meeting. PD did it. This guy's obviously really fast, and obviously in his world, that's pretty normal, because everybody's speaking that fast to him. The difference is, is that when you hit the doors, you're going to sound like this guy to your customers. Unless you consciously decide to slow down, take a deep breath, and really like focus on making that uh, a point to, to speak very slowly. Um, and that commercial is just that FedEx is really fast and you can get it done overnight, in case you're wondering. Um, so the next one is silence. One of the things that we, one of the problems you'll have is you feel like silence is just an opportunity for the customer to say no, or it feels awkward. And in reality, it's generally the opposite. It's an opportunity for the customer to say yes, or to voice a concern. So one of the things that I like to do on the doors is just really quick, so like, hey, real fast, my name is Tyler, I'm out here with Terminex. We're taking care of a few of your neighbors in the area. 
you're just starting to see those little ants, the citrus sugar ants, especially in the kitchen. And then with the wood lines you guys have here, just a few of those carpenter ants. Bottom line, we have some text opening in the area over the next few days, and we have some openings in the route. If you can work with me and get in, if I can get you into one of those spots, we can get it done for dirt cheap. Well, how much is it? Not it. So, it's a great question. How many bathrooms do you have? You get what I'm saying? Like, you just sit there and it's awkward for like, you feel like, especially as a first year rep, you'll be like, why is this taking so long? In reality, like two seconds will pass and the person will answer you, but to you it feels like 30. So you don't have to break that silence. Um, in fact, don't break that silence because that one is one of those things that kind of shows like a lack of confidence. When you stand there silently waiting for their answer, it's like you're so confident you just, I expect you to answer. If you don't, you're the weird one. It's the customer, not me. So, yeah, I'm weird. Yeah, we're all weird. It's cool. So, silence is a good one. Last one is echoey. Um, and this is just like mirroring, but for with volume and energy. I kind of already mentioned it. If the customer comes out, you know, they just got off work and it's super happy, I was like, hey, what's going on? How can I help you? And you're like, hey, just real quick. You know, or if they come out, they're like, what do you want? Like, they just real fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of mirror their pitch. Um, you can even mirror their speed to a degree. But generally, just focus on slowing down because everyone's probably going to be speaking slower than you. So that's the end of um, the metaverbal communication one. So now we're going to do one more little activity. We're going to practice speaking slowly for a few seconds. So everyone turn back to your partner. Um, and for 30 seconds, tell them about uh, the best thing that's happened to you this week. But speak extraordinarily slowly. And then the other person is going to speak back to you very slowly. Focus on a speed that you would want to use to get your customers.